is uh, Discover Power BI. So um, if you've been to one of our sessions before, uh, thank you for returning. Uh, if this is your first time, uh, welcome. Um, so my name is Joel Markham, the founder and architect of uh, the founder, God, CEO and founder of Architect Services. Um, and uh, just going to move straight on to the agenda, really, and kick us off. So uh, we'll do an introduction to Architect, um, an introduction to Power BI. We'll go through some of the benefits. Um, we'll do a show and tell. Um, and then we've just got some future Power BI events uh, that we'll um, kind of take you through as well. Um, one of the things to, to note is this is a very kind of high level uh, introductory session. So if you've uh, used Power BI in detail before um, and you're kind of an expert, then yeah, this is not going to be, I'm going to kind of bore you really. Uh, you're not going to learn anything uh, new. But if you haven't used um, Power BI before, um, and if it may be your first time or you're exploring it or you've used it for a, you know, a couple of hours, um, you know, and you're just starting to get into it and just want some, you know, I guess, further information on on the tool and what it can do, um, then then this hopefully will be useful to yourselves. Um, so, yeah, just to kick off in the, in the first agenda item then. So introduction to architect services, so our history. So uh, my background is PMO, um, project management. Uh, did a short stint in Lloyds Bank Group as a, as a project manager, then went on to head uh, the project team in Babcock International Group. Um, and then architect started and our first client was um, Companies House. So I, I went over to Companies House and led the portfolio transformation team over there. Um, architect today. Um, Two years later, two and a half years later, um, is um, you know, an organisation that delivers technology services to the clients you see on the page here. Um, so we're really proud to work with ONS, uh, Bayes, uh, DEFRA, uh, ACAS, and IPO, uh, and a couple of other private sector clients as well. So um, yeah, really excited uh, to to be sharing this with you today. So our approach is a little bit different, I guess. Um, we like to, to 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 adopt something called value at pace, and what that means to us is using uh, the best tools and the best systems. Um, always sharing ideas and information um, with each other, um, researching and innovating. So always trying to make, um, you know, innovate and, and, and stretch the boundaries and the art of the possible. Uh, and then hiring the best people, training them, collaborating, engaging with our partners and our communities as well uh, at the same time. Uh, we like learning and then for we like sharing. So we're always learning, always finding new ideas, um, new, new new ways of doing things uh, and then sharing that with the community here uh, on our weekly webinars, which is something we love to do. Um, and then uh, it's all about relationships and networking. So um, bringing people together and, and all that to us is what we we term delivering value at pace. All right. Um, so my mouse is slowly dying on me, which is not not the greatest time for my battery to die in my wireless mouse, um, but I'll, I'll persevere. Um, what we do is really broken down into four um, key areas. So we've got solutions. So this is building um, technology solutions, business solutions using the Microsoft 365 ecosystem. So Power Platform, SharePoint, Power Automate, uh, you know, Teams, bringing those technologies together, Power BI to build a technology solution for our customers. This could range, you know, from ideas portals through to, um, you know, kind of demand request systems to corporate risk uh, and corporate lessons, uh, capture tools, all the way through to project management systems and grant management systems uh, and everything in between really. Desk booking systems is a, is a priority one at the moment for some of our customers. So um, yeah, we, we take the Microsoft 365 platform, the Power Platform, um, and bring that together and build uh, business solutions um, in our agile, uh, a delivery approach. Um, also, we've got a few products, so a couple of exciting products in the pipeline that we're working with partners to develop at the moment. We're really excited about that. So let's bring in um, defined products to market, um, particularly in the healthcare space as well. Uh, and uh, yeah, um, all, all really about a SaaS offering uh, that you can procure from uh, the, the website and you'll be able to, you know, kind of meet a specific business need and their, their SaaS products and offerings. We've got services, so uh, delivering you know Microsoft support services. Um, lots of our customers have large user bases and you know big products that we've built or somebody else has built for them, and they want us to support those uh, products. So um, yeah, we're on hand as a service desk and a, and a ticketing system to to support those uh, 365 technologies um, to make sure that they continue to iterate and, and and fix any bugs that might be in in those systems. And then consulting really goes around everything that we do. So consulting is about you know our requirements. Uh, tracking things back to benefits, making sure the objectives are achieved of, of technology, and really focusing on the people, the processes, and the systems as that kind of three uh, three kind of gang approach, really. Um, and without consulting, uh, we wouldn't be able to do any other things. Uh, so it's really important, and, and our relationships with our customers are, are really important 
uh, to us to make sure it's a, a success. Um, as a Microsoft Gold partner, we specialize in project online, and Microsoft project. Um, and then we also specialize in Power Apps, Power BI, and Dynamics 365 as well. Um, of course, in delivering all those things that I've talked about earlier, we have to have um, capability in, in OneDrive, Power Automate, Teams, SharePoint, and all those other services as well. So um, we really have to kind of have an, a, a little bit of experience in, in a lot of those technologies across the Microsoft uh, 365, 365 technology stack. Um, so let's jump in. Um, what is Power BI? Um, really, Power BI is, is a tool that um, visualizes data. Uh, and what you can do with that data is the, is the really important bit. Uh, and I guess I can't prescribe to you today what you can do with your data. Um, but um, what I can do is tell you the technology and what the technology can do. Um, your challenge in your uh, workplace or in your uh, operating environment is to is to really understand what you can do with that data. Um, when you collate information together, um, in a visual way, you can really make some good decisions. The idea is that is to make better business decisions. It's actually you know, part of our mission and, and, and our mantra really at Architect is um, through data, through information being presented to you, um, you can you know, reduce your costs, be more efficient, um, you know, report on uh, on activities and, and analyze and interrogate that data to make uh, better decisions, learn from it and create a new strategy or a new vision or a new KPI going forward. Um, and, and really, it's a BI tool, uh, you know, a business intelligence tool um, to make everybody in the business or the operating environment um, or the project, you know, more informed of everything that's going on across the systems that you're using. Um, of course, one of the things to think about here is that it does require systems. So um, to look at data to look at. Um, so really, if, it, if you're kind of looking to create an output in a Power BI dashboard. One of the things we do here at Architect is always look at the output first. So we're always trying to wireframe and, and design these dashboards and what the customer is trying to do with this information uh, before we talk about the input side of the fence. So we try and differentiate between those two. Um, and really that's about, you know, what do you want to see? What do you want to decide? What do you want to do? Um, and then OK, so this, this is what you want to see in these dashboards. This is what you want to you want to understand in your business. Then, OK, so which inf which systems is it going to connect to then or do we need to connect it to? Um, and, and then we do that gap analysis. And at that point, you're saying, well, actually, you've got a CRM system for all these, the customer data, but you've got, uh, you know, you've got no project system or it's just Excel uh, for your project data. And, and therefore, we can help plug that gap or at least uh, accept that we, we're, we're connecting to to an old Excel spreadsheet with those type of technologies. You know? um, so, but really it's reporting and dashboards. It's about, you know, identifying uh, your data modeling and, and visualizing your data and sharing your data. Um, this picture on the screen really helps to show that it, it's not just about on a screen, on a tablet. Um, it, you know, it's on your phone. And a, a lot of customers that we work with are not still not in the mobile platform space. But um, I remember going to see a, a, a kind of a mentor of mine about three years ago. Um, it was like four years ago now, and I was talking to him about Icatech and the vision and what we were trying to do. And he was up in Birmingham, and I remember, you know, kind of talking about where we were based in Cardiff, and 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 he just he got out his phone and Power BI on his phone straight into a, a, like a nice little visual. And he was like, oh, have I got any customers in Cardiff and South Wales? And he was just on his map and it was all Power BI based on his CRM system. And he just had, you know, all the you know, real kind of um, quick, easy data to get hold of just to, you know, see where his customer base was. Um, that really kind of epitomizes what Power BI is as a tool, I think, as an example, as a use case. Um, so, you know, you know, a lot of our customers, due to the nature of the customers, use the, 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 the kind of uh, website browser, which I'll show you today. But um, I think one of the key points is you can use it in multiple form factors and, and you should really. Um, it's about having access to this data um, as quickly as possible. All right. Um, so we'll come on, we'll kind of deep dive into into a couple of these little different sections later on. Um, <laughs> Creating interactive dashboards is a little bit of a weird one. Uh, there's actually most of what I'm going to show you today is, is technically called a report. It's a little bit annoying. It's one of those kind of Power BI kind of weird things that they have dashboards and reports, two different things. Um, but whenever I show somebody a report, they always say, oh, that's a good dashboard. It's, it's just the standard word for the thing. <laughs> um, it's just good to know, and I'll come on to show you later on, that the 
whilst I also call it a dashboard, um, what you're seeing on the screen here is actually technically in Power BI a report. Um, and if that's one of those annoying things, that, and I'll show you what a dashboard looks like later because uh, it is distinctly different. Um, but yeah, it's really about telling the story. Um, it's really about generating these reports quickly uh, in real time. Uh, and it's really about um, piecing together these different systems um, and visualizing this you know you don't have to piece together different systems uh, you can just point it at one system and, and to be fair i'd say 40 percent of our customers probably do that they just point to one um, system that they're using um, most of the customers are more than half do actually point them at two or three systems join the data together and then visualize that data um, because they're trying to connect say zero and excel and sharepoint together you know to make a decision um, often that's where the next level of value comes from is by connecting those different systems but um this is is visual as you can see here on the screen um and it really is about kind of interacting with that data um and when i show you later the reports we'll show you how you can click and drop and and filter um on these reports one thing i would say is that um some people have talked to me about this being a drag and drop type thing and, and, and the, almost the idea I can build a report on the fly. I, I'm probably against that a little bit in terms of Power BI. Power BI is very, very capable. It's a very, very functional tool. Uh, in, a, in a business, I, I wouldn't say that it's, a, it's, a, it's really a, an end user tool. Um, you have to be an expert. You have to understand queries, you know, DAX formulas, you know, relationships, data, tables, entities, you know, primary, secondary keys. Um, you have to under, understand all that in order to really create a dashboard that looks like this. Um, and so the, I think it really depends on, on where you are, who, you, who you're working with at the moment, what your challenge is in, in, the, in the environment you're operating within, um, as to how you use Power BI. Um, the real value, as I say, is when you've got somebody who's a real expert in, in creating these queries uh, and, and real, it's, it's an art, it's an artistic design flair to, to create a, a visual that works for a user. It's it's not a, it's not easy <laughs> to do something like this on the screen. Um, it, it's relatively easy to create a report that, um, that, that shows one data set with a graph that looks quite nice. You know, that's pretty simple. Um, and there's plenty of tutorials on, on our website, on YouTube and online that you can kind of step through to create that. When you take that next step into merging it with a different data set, that's when it gets a bit bit more difficult. Um, but the other thing to think about here is that it's it's re for, for that reason, uh, the re it's, it's a bit more complicated than say creating a pivot table, you know, in Excel. And this is really for uh, designed for uh, repeatable reports. Um, it's about having something that you're going to look at every month or every week. Um, if you want a report, one-time report, it's, it's pointless putting it to Power BI. Um, yes, it's just pointless because you're going to have to spend so much time building it and merging your queries and and then creating this visual which looks nice, and then you're probably going to leave it and never look at it again. So, um, and you, if you want just the numbers for that one-time uh, report you're probably better at going to Excel, O data feed, connect it all together, do a pivot table and just, you know, I've got 15 customers in Cardiff, it, you know, it's just, you know, but if you need to interact with that data and add other um, kind of models on top of it and look at it every month, say in a board meeting or a operations review or a sales meeting, uh, that's when I personally believe Power BI is really, really useful because you're using it continually. You're coming back to it every day, every week, every month um that's my that's my opinion <laughs> um so um uh, why power bi uh, you know i guess again it, it's the decisions you make as a result of the data um it's being able to say actually thanks for my marketing dashboard you know um i could see my customer base um what products are they buying off us because if we knew what products they were buying off the shelf in it, what store then i can um, I can tailor my marketing strategy in those regions to sell those products or sell the beans over the sausages, bad example. But, you know, you, you can tailor that. But if we knew that every month in our operational review, we could continually monitor that trend and monitor the trend over time. And, and how interesting would it be to see 
how much how much you know how much of the of the products we sell over a calendar year month on month so we see there's a peak at christmas or a shortfall in the summer uh, when everybody's on holidays and buying food abroad you know <laughs> um so um it's that it's that data uh, uh, overlaid with other scenarios and more particularly over time um once you get over time trending that's when it gets really really interesting and the development team here do the head scratching <laughs> um, but the idea is that you're, you're taking these 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 models and this information and you're making better business decisions around the performance of your business or even the health of your business or um you know the health of your project or whatever it is that uh, you're trying to you're trying to look at um and it's only when you do that time and time and time again you know month one month two month three you look at a board pack um you know a company board pack an operational board pack and you're looking at it over time you know what were we last month what was our PL the month before you know what's our rags this month um you can really make use of Power BI and you continually make different changes to the system and to the report month on month. That's really where uh, this tool is designed to sit really um, the best use. So, you know, if that one off task is going to take you five hours to go and do with Excel and it's going to be, you know, a single um, data set. So you go and take an Excel spreadsheet somewhere and you copy and paste it into your standalone spreadsheet and then you go and copy and paste your, your your sales data from your from your finance system and put it into another sheet in excel and then you go and you know connect your other your sharepoint list of your products into excel and you know copy paste you've got your single data set right and then you do your pivot table on that pivot table on that report you know that is static data it's disconnected from reality from you know the real world because the moment that I copy and paste it into my Excel spreadsheet SharePoint this is out of date you know my ERP system has moved my SharePoint system has moved um and my sales data has moved you know so um this is about actually investing that time in in building a system that you can hit refresh yeah you hit the refresh button in three weeks time and it just pulls all the latest data down into that into that reporting cube and you can report on that instantly yeah in that example I gave you earlier with with a mentor of mine so um, this is really about, you know, automation. That's how you can save time here is by putting the effort into building um, a report that is you know, can refresh, connect this data, and then, um, yeah, and then you know, you're not having to recopy and paste all, all, all your data across. Um, I remember in 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 Company's House, um, uh, one of the very first weeks we were talking about portfolio management and, and the projects we had across the across the portfolio. Um, and I remember a senior member of, of staff saying, "Can you go and get me a list of all the risks across the company, uh, all of the portfolios, sorry, and uh, you know report back to me on on, on the, the highest risks across the across the across the organisation?" And I, there's 55, 60 projects on going, you know, and there's, there's sort of 65 different spreadsheets um, with probably you know five. 10 risks in each of them um flip back. <laughs> it's a lot of work to go and copy all those into one system into one place you know that's where you could if you wanted to use power bi to bring all those risks together you could connect them all to all those 55 different uh, sp uh, spreadsheets if you wanted to um or, or you could use it in this technology with a couple of components in it to to to, to connect through data sets and stuff like that to, to bring all that together and so you do that once uh, the moment I, if I went down that manual kind of route of collect, collecting all that information, copy and pasting all the spreadsheets into a, you know, I can imagine doing it a PowerPoint, you know, these are my top five risks across the portfolio in my PowerPoint from my copy and pasted spreadsheet. And the moment I, pres I'm like, create that, you know, somebody's, you know, in the evening changing their risk lock and my, my information is out of date. So, um, yeah, that, that's a kind of a, another example use case of where building the report increases automation, uh, removes the manual. Uh, tasks and actually increases accuracy as well when you know having the real-time information at any point in time somebody could go and look at that report hit refresh and you've got all the risks across the portfolio right. so there's a couple of different things in here um i guess it's it's this is trying to show that you can create lots of different data sets into take lots of different data sets and data sources into the desktop report and service and then you can you can publish it. So it's the you know, publishers a, a word that was you know I I've seen used in SharePoint quite a lot. Uh, where you've got a a local copy of your document. Similar concept here. Um, PowerPoint PowerPoint <laughs> Power BI. You have a local copy of your um, report. 
and you can publish that to a reporting service so that other people can access that that report um, but you can effectively keep your own offline copy so you can tweak it you can make changes to it uh, and that how you do that is by downloading something called the pbix file so you know with the data set you can click on the three dots and i'll show you that in a minute and you can download the pbix file and you can start you know modifying and building that file um, and those reports in the power bi desktop version and then you can publish it then to a workspace um, and then other people can access that 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 report uh, and that just gives you control it gives you the ability to, to to test you know and to not break stuff especially if these are enterprise wide resources or uh, reports and they're you know across a, you know a high user number or they're really critical to your business because that's what power bi is good at is reporting on business critical information really really important stuff time and time again um so so to have that offline or someone make a change and, and tweak something which which prevents you from making that important business decision. Um, this level of governance and control is 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 very useful uh, and helps. Um, and you can even go one step further and have different reporting spaces as well. So you could have a a test environment and publish it to your test environment. Ask four people to to come and have a go, and then you could publish it to your live environment later on. Then yeah, so you can do lots of things in in that space. Um, there's a, a whole set of data sources we can connect to in Power BI, so Excel, CSV, um, PDFs, oh yeah, PDFs, <laughs> uh, SQL, Oracle, uh, and even you know, websites and data sources like Google Analytics, YouTube, um, those type of services you connect directly to them. So it doesn't have to be a document; it could be a service, um, you know, and, and therefore you're pulling information from uh, a service that you pay for, maybe, um, rather than you know a, a, a file or a data set. Uh, SharePoint is in there as well. Um, SAP, if you're using a, a big SAP instance, um, Dynamics 365, you know, Excel, if you have got an Excel sheet with all your staff on it and you know their location or um, yeah, <laughs> you know, it's not too much more detail in Excel spreadsheet for your staff, but you know, um, you know, all your products and, and, and where your products are sold or, or other data sets in Excel, you can connect to one or many of those data sets um, and uh, yeah, pull that together into your Power BI desktop file and then uh, publish it to your report and server and other people can access that as well. So, um, I, it's visually appealing, you know, it's a nice uh, feature rich service. So you can use the tiles to click and, and, to, and to interact with the data in the way in which the designer of the report has, has, has built it. Yeah, um, if you've got a, a drop down a filter, you can see that, um, you know, we've got kind of uh, a, a five by five model for risks that when you select the risk, it changes the color of the boxes. Yeah? Um, so lots of things you could do to make it visually, um, you know, attractive as, as, a, as a toolkit. So, so in summary, just, uh, you know, the, the advantage is really for me is it, it, it is simple to use from an end user. That That's really the key, you know. I, I, some people say sometimes it's a simple to, to, you know, it's not simple to build a comprehensive and complex dashboard. It is hard work, um, but as an end user, it's meant to be simple for the CEO or you know a senior stakeholder to click on their phone, and go, you know, I'm going to look at that report because I'm going to look at my customers in that location area. Um, there's no memory required on the phone or the device, uh, and it's secure. You've got to log in with the authentication and 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 move into that and and you know report on that. And you can control therefore um, what services you can access through permissions. So if somebody's not able to, to access the CRM, it wouldn't show them that data. All right, so those are the kind of uh, the, the top advantages for me for Power BI. So enough talking about the theory. Uh, let me just uh, bring this in and show you the, the kind of the, the, the real uh, reality of Power BI. Um, so just a couple of things to, to mention here. So I'm on... Um, I'm on a, a new 64-bit machine, so I can't show you um, the desktop version, which is a bit frustrating. Um, but I can show you the browser version, so um, we could talk through how how it differs. Um, one of the things, um, although I haven't used the desktop version in a in a long in a long time, um, more so the browser version. Um, when I stopped using the desktop version about three months ago, um, the desktop version had a lot more capability and functionality in it. Uh, the browser version of Power BI. Or was almost catching up. Um, I don't honestly know if it's the same anymore, but um, I, I presume it is. Um, and so the desktop feature is where you should start if you're um, new to Power BI. Go and download Power BI desktop for free. 
um, go and start creating your reports. If you're using it now, you'll you'll look at that and go, I, it's kind of familiar. Um, you can see, you can see what it's trying what it's trying to do. Uh, I'm just gonna I, I, I always uh, fail to get my uh, screen to fully maximise on this, which is there we go. <laughs> oh well, um, I'll. Uh, it frustrates me the blue bar at the bottom, so bear with me a minute. Um, uh, there we go. Let's just get. Uh, there we go. <laughs> this bugs me having the blue bar at the bottom there, but uh, no, this is the browser version, and we'll we'll start here. So um, these little three lines here, they're they're pretty cool to use, uh, especially if you're not really navigating in and you're visualizing how things are going to look and work. And you're designing reports, you can just click those three dot three lines there, and it moves the pane into these uh, these icons here. Uh, we're obviously on the home page at the moment, um, and this is a demo environment. So my name's Mod in this example. <laughs> uh, just a really bad demo name uh, that Microsoft uh, give us. Um, but you can see if you land on your on the browser version, you will get recommendations of quick start guides and and how to use Power BI. So you don't have to totally listen to to me or anything you see online. You can just start clicking, exploring, and going through some data sets, and uh, you can start just you know creating some new reports really. Um, and this is where you might go and you know if you click on new reports there, you might enter your data manually if you really wanted to. Um, this is normally for like reference data. So if you've got like, um, say for example, you had like uh, month one in your business was actually October, uh, and so you, your your calendars were out of cycle with anything you could reference in in, in data terms. Um, you could you could do a little little reference table here that says these are the months in the year, obviously October, November, December, so on so forth, and these are what it what the, the number it means to us as a business. So month one, month two, month three might be October, November, December. Uh, you would kind of enter you could enter that data as manual reference data in this table here. All right, so I'm actually kind of adding, you know, this is what, what it means to me. Um, this is the table name, um, and then I'm I'm going to kind of use my reference data here. Uh, you could even use um, this to add the, the real data that you want to, to report on. So if you had, you know, five people in your organization, you might want to just create the table here in the application itself. Um, and then when you report on that um, later on, you know, or import the data later on, you can reference it to this uh, to this simple table you've created here. To be fair, not many of our customers will use this, or not many of the reports that we've built will use this um, way of entering data. It is more about connecting data and bringing data together. All right, so we would normally pick a published data set. Now, a data set is effectively a, a database. Yeah, so it's really saying, okay, so I've got all these tables from all these different systems um, and you're combining uh, those data sets together um, and you're using those data sets to create a report. Um, so think of it as like the back end and the front end um, per se of an old system in that old development language really. Um, there's kind of your tables uh, and uh, the systems that they connect to. So you're bringing in five tables from my SharePoint site, which are your lists potentially, and I'm bringing in 15 tables from my Dynamics 365 CRM solution, and I'm bringing in three tables from my time machine system. All that can form a data set. All right, so you're going to create a report based on a data set. All right, and then what you can do then is you can go in here and you can see these tables here that are effectively pulled through in your data set. All right, and then these are the fields that are available in, in your data set. And you can see the different types of fields as well. So this is a formula, uh, these are the calculation fields, and uh, this is just a, a kind of standard field with a with a, with a value in it um, of whatever's in, in, in that field at that time. Uh, and and so kind of this is where it needs, you kind of the data Kind of management structure needs to come into it where you know these tables could be from different systems therefore they need different keys different referenceability links between them so a campaign id you might need to link to have a one-to-many relationship with a you know a year or or, or, or a product you know so you need to design that uh, out really um and do a little quick system schema really just to kind of measure 
make all those work. But this is where you get your visualizations um, and you can drag and drop your visualizations into a report there effectively, right? And then say, actually, this is the table I want to use. Um, and then in my table, I'm actually going to pull in, you know, these fields. I'm not going to go too crazy with, show, with kind of how to today. Um, it's more about um, just an overview and introduction. I don't want to go into too much detail because uh, I could be here for a long time. And if, if you're kind of past this level of, of um, knowledge, check our YouTube channel out, subscribe to us on YouTube because there's lots of other videos from the, the techie guys on, on how to do this properly. Um, or, or uh, you know, there's lots of content on the Microsoft website as well, step-by-step -step guys how to do this stuff. But but effectively here, you're seeing that the, a, a table that I've pulled through in, or has been pulled through in a, in a standard data set from a system is being pulled through to this visualization here. All right. And then you could create the filters. So you can have a filter on the visual, you can have a filter on the page, on, on the whole page itself. And then you can see here, if you've got different pages, you can have filters on the whole report, the whole collection, all pages here. So if you only, want, only ever wanted to look at, you know, the male <laughs> kind of gender in this example, um, or female gender, you could do that report, um, uh, uh, that filter at the report level. All right. And then every other one of these visuals here, will be updated um, will be up that filter will be applied all right um, he says <laughs> so you've got this is just you know kind of just dummy data putting it in here into this as you can see females is the kind of only record that's applied here all right you've you know and, and I'm gonna un, I'm now gonna for, for making sure it does work I'm now gonna kind of select male and that should now there we go so that filter that's applied to all those three tabs yeah, those three pages um, is now being applied uh, to this visual here. All right, this is a simple table visual, but again, if you if you had a big funnel in here as well, um, with your your kind of your I don't know, your segments and your dates and all that kind of good stuff, um, segments, email status, you could start bringing your your visuals through uh, this 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 point here. Um, one of the things to mention is these three dots underneath here, these three icons are how you go and build and visualize your kind of your report. So you can change your segment over 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 email status, your fields, you can put your values in here, you can format things in here as well. So you format every title. Um, this is really where the development team here will live in terms of creating these um, these visuals uh, as aesthetically and as, as useful as possible. But I'm going to stop there because otherwise I'm going to go sidetrack and get excited about creating visuals. <laughs> so so that's as simple as, you know, just to recap, you, you're hitting on home. I'm not going to save that. New report and you, you kind of look at your published data set. All right. The next thing is those data sets. So you can you can bring these data sets through. It's quite a lot of learning on the on the on the report itself. So you've got to learn more what is data sets. Uh, probably read that and and get more of a, a useful explanation than me. Um, and then um, I talked earlier on about dashboards versus reports, didn't I? So I'm just going to go into um, a workspace. This is a sales and marketing workspace. This is like a 365 group. You know, I, I'm part of the sales and marketing team in, in, in this example. I've got a mixture of my data sets. So the data we're pulling through, uh, the report that we created, which is what I kind of showed you earlier, but a much better version. <laughs> so these are the, the reports. Um, and then you've got, if I go back, you've got dashboards. Now, dashboards is almost, if you think of the hierarchy, data sets sit at the bottom, the data sets are for you know, everybody to use in different reports. Um, reports are there and they, they consume one or more data set. Um, and then dashboards is taking um, components of those reports and putting them into a, a dashboard at top level. Um, so I'm just going to click on this now and you'll notice, oh, typical, <laughs> I didn't have any data in there. Oh. <laughs> okay, so uh, the dashboard you'll notice looks different. Um, let me just go on to the Mark 8 project. I'm pretty sure I checked this out the other day. Uh, no, okay, okay. I will, uh, I'll come back to that later on. <laughs> um, but I'll show you a dashboard later on. Um, but it takes the components of a report and it brings that to, to the kind of parent level. To, to be really honest, we don't use that a lot at the moment. 99% uh, of the Power BI uh, reports and stats and you know um, activity is in a report um, across you know the, the customers that we work with. If you were fully embedded with Power BI and you had a thousand Power BI reports and you wanted a wallboard, for example, in your office of you know 
some you know things that moved and were dynamic and they were like cards nice cards and nobody could interact with them nobody could shuffle them up and down you'd use a dashboard if you've seen a wall board in an office you know a good looking one then that's kind of you're on the same you're on the right kind of lines with what a dashboard is there um so we're going to go into the report itself or actually we're going to start at the bottom we're going to go to the data set itself and this is the data set here um and we're going to go into that now and it's loading the the the, the report so it's going into the data set and going up into the report level here and this is you know, just a simple mocked uh, power bi dashboard uh, the, the idea here is that you know you're in a, a board meeting let's say they're in the sales uh, team meeting or board meeting um you know i'm the sales director for example and i'm presenting to the board the performance of sales yeah this is you know the, exactly the use case it's on a big 75 inch screen at the front of the room um maybe a touch screen or maybe i'm sitting down on my laptop and i'm presenting this right and we're saying okay so what are the opportunities in discovery at the moment then so these are the opportunities um clearly no no not many of them in, in discovery but there's some that are you know by opportunity by account value so these are the ones you can see the whole thing has kind of moved it has moved to update to filter on discovery um then I'm going to go into into pre-qualification. Like I see that this, you know, the tailspin toys here has gone up, uh, and and that one there, the Southridge video went down. You know, it's just to be able to take you through the journey. You could talk and and you know architect your conversation or your update based on the narrative that this this is this is showing you. All right, so you can step through and you can see all these dashboards are dynamically updating. Um, one of the things that it doesn't it doesn't do quite well on this example is go back to um there we go so if you click on the actual um sometimes i i put we put a button that says the kind of un unfilter so go reset go back to the um the original uh, one of the tricks of power bi is if you click on that bottom filter by there um to get back almost to get off it you know we normally click it again and it undoes the filter but sometimes that's quite hard for usability so that's some of the kind of the tricks that that we would put in place but this is your kind of um actual revenue month by month change so you can see our revenue in this example is going down and it's going up month by month so this is a, obviously a report that's used every month in a board meeting it's not just a one-off thing <laughs> yeah and then actually if i'm if i'm a regional sales director and i'm the european sales director my funnel looks totally different yes yeah, so i'm now reporting on these i've got a different set of accounts yeah i've got a different trend analysis and this is obviously my customer base here is in Europe and, and, and around here, not around, um, not, 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 not globally. All right, so it's the same report filtered by different, by different, um, you know, different uh, regions or whatever it might be. If you notice there, it's just, you know, there's no off button, there's, there's no all. <laughs> yeah, so uh, you have to, in this example, they haven't got an all button. Um, some people like the all button to say, give me everything back again, or actually some people like just clicking on the, the filter again and it unfilters it, brings everything back to life. So these things are quite cool. I, to be honest, we haven't used these yet, but these radio buttons, but you know, you can click on the audio category here and that has now filtered the whole page by that, you know, the opportunity value by product category. All right. So, um, you know, you can find use cases for these charts or these graphics or these 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 types of filters again in here this is about um filtering um and you can put these filters at the top you, know, you can fill them at the bottom you can make them like donuts and make them crazy <laughs> but this is the uh, electronics uh, product category the camera product category here we go so you can see this funnel is a not a very funnel looking funnel but you know it's there nonetheless and you've got the opportunity value by pipeline phase here so this is kind of stage one all through to stage two so you've got a lot of opportunity 24 million dollars of opportunity in the evaluation stage at the moment heavily in north america uh, clearly heavily in north america not a lot you know russia or africa you know um so you can you can see how you could make some decisions on this information um but a lot of a lot a lot of thinking has gone into uh, this, you know, visualization of of the of the data itself. Um, one thing you can do, and I'll kind of pre warn anybody that hasn't actually embarked on a Power BI challenge yet, is that you can almost get to a position of too much data and too many too many reports. Um, you, you can get so excited by it, we can 
what if you throw that in there? What if you throw that in there? Put that in there as well with a new report and you get to 15 reports and you sit there in a board meeting and go, <laughs> you can't, you know, there's a lot, of, a lot of stuff here, but it's not really telling me something. Um, it's not really taking me through the journey. Um, and you, you've got to be that, you've got to design that process and make sure you, you don't get into that position where you've just got lots and lots of stats because um, it will get overwhelming. So you've got your actual revenue. Here's another, just another example chart. And this is, you know, variance to sales target. So obviously $10 million um, uh, negative in Germany at the moment. Spain's doing really, really well. Yeah. Uh, and UK, India, Canada are somewhat in the middle. And this is, you know, the, 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 the global. Um, you can see some of the kind of the regional filters. So if I'm in Europe, actually, I'm the European sales director in my territory. You know, Spain is still high. Um, UK is still nothing, you know, and that's, that's obviously where most of that uh, that data is driven from, isn't it? By the looks of things. So we've got a South America. There we go. We've got, you know, a couple of different um, uh, areas there uh report on so yeah you know this is how you can build these reports and, and, and use these reports you know um to, to to drive informed decisions um that is the output of, of power bi uh, and how you how you kind of get to that is as i say your data your data sets connecting your data sets uh, and building them through uh, the power bi service one of the other things you can do, which is quite cool, is goals. So goals is a relatively new feature um, and you can set goals um, across the enterprise. So I'll give you an example. Let's go to sales target. So, so you can set these kind of um, KPIs effectively for your business and you can pull in this data and visualize these goals in a, a less overwhelming way yeah if you're very much focused on strategic objectives um goals and tracking these over time you can see this progress here is going up the trend is going up four percent month on month you know you can start you know uh, reporting on the goals of your business without having to go and create a, a kpi a dashboard for example and then you can link them as well so you can link this um this uh sub goal with the parent goal uh, and have the whole thing kind of uh, linked together, which is which is really really cool. Um, and all you would do is simply refresh the data here, and it will refresh all that connected to all your systems. So imagine that's connected to your finance system or your HR system or whatever it may be. Um, you can you can you can control that here. Uh, you can use these as well as goals within dashboards. So you can say actually, you know, what's my operational um, target against the KPI one. There's actually stored in goals, yeah. So you can say, and it's red, amber, green. You, know, you can use that as reference data, um, which, is, which is quite cool. Apps. Um, this demo environment doesn't do us justice with apps, really, unfortunately, for for for, for Power BI. But apps are almost like like your very strategic user, um, your very senior user or high volume user doesn't want to go into a report like this. Um, they they may feel like it's a bit um, overwhelming to go into a report down here and see all these tabs and you know see all these um, charts and graphs and stuff and these these filters. Um, it's not much different to an app, but uh, an app is almost like a, a third layer of publication. It's almost like you know. Um, how you were presented to a CEO, you know, or if the, you want to give something to a CEO that was absolutely, you know, tested, it works, it was aesthetically pleasing, it was correct all the time, um, it had limited filters on it, you would go and use an, a, a Power BI app to, 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 to push that out. Right. Um, but some of the, the content packs that they give you for this kind of stuff is, is it's kind of there and thereabouts anyway. So you, you can you can pull this data into Power into Power BI. It gives you a predefined app so you can see what your business is doing. You've got the Dynamics 365 Business Central in there as well. Um, and then you can configure that app then um, to 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 surface more more information more more robustly. Um, it's it's really like um, if, you know we've had customers that have like the, the portfolio uh, reports um and they just use the, the reports in 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 the workspace uh, and then you've got the kind of sro community for example and we meet once a month they got an sro app um and it's, it's just got a different version is that you can choose what you publish to the reporting app itself right? and you can apply other filters on that as well 
So you've got dashboards, uh, just to, you know, come back to that. Um, bit annoying, I can't show you one of those. Um, I'm, I'm just going to do a Power BI dashboard just to show you, it's frustrating me <laughs> and I can't show you that. So, um, uh, so I just want to show you some uh, typical because the word dashboard is so common across across the, the internet it's not really coming up with a specific dashboard uh, no okay that's really no what i'll do is i'll send one out later on but as i say they're probably the least used service in our experience in power bi um uh, and yes it is really about when you've got 15 different reports and you want to take this component or that little chart and you want to put that into a dashboard along with say um you know uh, this chart here from that report you can take those different charts from those different reports and put them into one dashboard um yeah so um this is just another example um just to show you some of the other things you could put in here so you've got uh, these different kind of visuals these are really cool funky kind of almost overwhelming at times and you can see some of the bad design in here so sum equals or sum is the label gens the label here um you can't really use that can you uh, as, a, as a tool it's not intuitive and user friendly um so they're, they're some of the things that you know you kind of improve on as you do it time and time again um these are the word cloud so you can bring up certain words uh to, and you'll filter the report by those words so inspired um where customers is inspired by the feedback. So we've got lots of people in Europe who are inspired at the moment, apparently, according to this, uh, according to this demo. Uh, lots of people, uh, you know, across the other other areas that, are, that are, you know, see quality as one of the words. Um, it, you, once you see it, I can't really explain it too much because it, it is what it says on the tin, really. It, you know, is is a Power BI a visualization tool, but. Um, this is uh, you've got counts, you've got cards, you've got the graphs, the maps. You know, it really is a comprehensive as, as, as you can make it. Um, so that's really it for the show and tell. Um, what I would advise is that you download uh, Power BI desktop and you start, start having to go, start connecting it to some data sets, start adding some data sets into the system um, and just start playing with it really. Um, as soon as you get into um, the realms of publishing and other people accessing it, uh, you'll need to get, you'll get into license implications there. So um, Power BI Desktop is free um, and it's a service that you can download and start playing with. As soon as you publish it to a workspace and somebody else accesses that uh, dashboard, that, that report, it's a Power BI Pro license you need in order to do that. And it's a Pro license for everybody else who, who views it, if that makes sense, rather than a license for you. <laughs> um, so yeah, that, that's one of the license implications. Um, uh, the other thing to think about as well, if you're in a bigger organization, then E5 covers those licenses. So a Microsoft E5 license will cover that. Uh, uh, and, and yes, really, really, yeah, I'm trying to just double check all my notes. Um, what did I want to show? I, one of the things I can't show at the moment is the connection into new data sets. Um, in, in this kind of demo, I would like to be able to bring in uh, new information. Um, you can download the PBX file from here, and then on the desktop version, you can bring in uh, the, uh, the data from different uh, data sets itself. Um, and that could be OData, that could be Power BI, um, really, really whatever you want uh, to, to show and connect to. Um, yes, uh, that's the only one I didn't have on my list was I've done goals, data sets, uh, workspaces. So this is, you know, your Office 365 group effectively, where you can access your workspace and you can share your workspaces with the organizations and you can create your connections into different storage areas as well. Um, and you can you know create a new workspace for the IT team or HR um, and then you're all building your reports yourself uh, and you've got the permissions then as well so you can give somebody a you know, contributor or an admin access um, or a viewer a viewer only um, or, or a contributor to make some minor changes at the same um, to, to the reports you've created um, this little button down here get data so this is where you could try and connect to your different uh, data sources um, and different databases uh, or even your different files if you've got an excel spreadsheet you connect to your files here um i think that's it really i'm just going to try and see if it'll let me show you a data set because they are quite cool if we can cool so you can you can actually bring in data you can from new tables or link to other data flows which is quite cool so if you've got a database here we go this is what i want to get to so if you want to get to um oh, it's not gonna let me do it because uh here we go, just double check. So if, if you're using a multiple systems, 
and you want to bring in um, that you know that data into a table that you can reference in your Power BI reports, uh, then you can effectively use data flows to bring to bring that content in. Uh, I will show it to you because it's uh, annoying, but if you go to you could do it another way in make.powerapps.com um, and you can go into um, data data flows. Here we go. And you can connect, you can take a new data flow and this will be referenced in uh, Power BI, by the way. So that's what I'm showing in here. Um, and you can, here we go. So you can access all these data sources, which is the key point really. Yeah, so if you've got SAP, you've got Azure, Salesforce, it doesn't have to be a Microsoft technology stack, you know, Google Analytics via website and a general OData feed if you're using OData connections, which is majority of the stuff that people are trying to connect to using that technology. SharePoint online lists, web APIs, hey, an old access database if you've got one, <laughs> you know, I got an access database, 20 years old, whatever it is, uh, SQL database as well, um, or an Excel file. All right, uh, other online services as well. Um, so you could connect to these, bring them all together, and then use the table in the data set to go and report on that information. All right, so just going to go back to the uh, the, the uh, slide. So uh, I hope you found that useful in, in some parts. It's quite hard to do an intro into Power BI because it's just such a big tool. Um, and it's got so many use cases and so many benefits and so many options. Um, I guess if, you, if you've got any questions or any thoughts or you were, you've seen something today you think actually I could use that in my business, how could I do that? Uh, then please do feel free to uh, email me at info at architectservices.co.uk um, or connect with me on LinkedIn. I'm more than happy to have a chat uh, just to show you what I can do. Um, I'm obviously more than happy to show you some other customer stuff. I can't show you customer stuff on a webinar because of course it's on YouTube and don't want to show people um, things that uh, we can't show people for obvious reasons. Um, but if you want to know more about Power BI, um, Toby is going to do an advanced features in Power BI. So this is kind of a couple of levels down into how to connect stuff, uh, how to build some visuals, uh, the latest and greatest from Power BI. So that's on Wednesday, the 17th of November uh, from four to five. So if you want to take the next step in the journey, go down a level in terms of the uh, the technicalities here, uh, then please do feel free to um, to sign up to that webinar. Uh, you can find it on our website. Um, for anything else, uh, as I say, please do email us at info at architectservices.co.uk. Uh, drop us a phone number, uh, drop, drop us a phone. Um, you know, happy to answer the phone, just have a chat with anybody. Um, you know, the, the reception can direct you to, to one of the technical advisors or, or myself. Um, LinkedIn, Facebook, we are on YouTube. And we need to update this actually, uh, Lauren, because we're on Spotify as well now, which is pretty cool. So you can follow us on Spotify uh, and hear some podcasts that we do from, from time to time as well. Um, so yeah, thank you very much for your time today. Uh, it's much appreciated, and uh, hopefully you learned something, found some found some value out of the uh, out of the tool itself. Um, have a great day. Uh, do please do stay safe and stay healthy, and uh, look forward to catching up on the next one. Thanks very much for your time. Cheers.